Okay, so uh, the initial title for this uh, presentation was uh, CPU isolation, how to tune it with or through CPU sets, I think. But uh, doing the presentation, I realized uh, some mistakes um, made. I mean, this is the point of doing presentation, right? And uh, yeah, so I made it a little bit more generic, like how to tune it on runtime. Maybe CPU sets, maybe using something else. Um, so to begin with, what is CPU isolation? So the point is to avoid disturbing a CPU and uh, offload or move some work executing on the CPU we want to isolate to a bunch of um, CPUs that we can name um, housekeeping CPUs. Um, this is currently only boot defined. So the only way to, um, to uh, tune a set of CPUs to isolate is only through uh, these three um, kernel parameters, no hertz full. Uh, this basically isolates most of the, the work that can be isolated. RCU no CBs is only about offloading uh, the um, RCU callbacks, processing and invocation. And ISIL CPUs is only about um, isolating a CPU from scheduler domains and uh, avoiding all the load balancing. And as a side effect also, it isolates a CPU from uh, unbound timers and uh, work queues, which no it's full does as well anyway. So, um, so housekeeping is kind of the revert of uh, isolation. So when a work is uh, exported from an isolated CPUs, it goes to a housekeeping CPU. Um, these isolation features are all grouped into uh, CPUs, um, yeah, CPU, uh, CPU masks. Uh, I guess one of the most famous one is the uh, no hertz full mask, which uh, gathers all the CPUs that stops their tick in user space. Uh, but you can also find um, um, CPU mask for uh, unbound timers, unbound work queues, and unbound case threads. So all these things are unbound works that can execute pretty much anywhere, preferably um, on some node closer to uh, the, the, the CPUs that enqueue a work. Um, but anyway, those are unbound works, uh, as opposed to, for example, uh, per CPU timers or per CPU work use that cannot really be offloaded or exported to other CPUs. Um, there are other features that are a little bit more obscure, such as uh, managed IRQs, which I never really understood what this is about, but uh, Thomas might answer if you have questions later. Um, IRQ, yeah. <laughs> um, so why bothering with all these separate uh, CPU masks? So the point was to be able to individually tune all the CPU masks separately through, for example, CPU sets. Uh, why in the hell do we bother, would we bother uh, only tuning, for example, just uh, timers or work use uh, CPU masks? Uh, the answer is just that I don't know. Uh, I cannot figure out any possible uh, use cases the, uh, the most famous CPU isolation use cases are those uh, where we want to move away every possible work from uh, an isolated CPU. But I can imagine some setup like HPC where you might want to uh, disable the tick in user space just to avoid some um, overload, I mean. Some uh, yeah, if you want to 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 keep the CPU cache hot and not have the timer uh, ticking all the time and trashing the cache, for example, or just consuming CPU uh, CPU time uh, a thousand times per second. So maybe some people might be interested, for example, in uh, disabling the tick in user space, but 
wouldn't care about moving the unbound timer work you so there you go this is the the reason why i would like to prefer uh being able to have it fine grained so um one of the first attempt i tried was to um start with rcu no cb uh, RC, rcu no cb is about offloading um callbacks invocation and tracking uh, in RCU to another CPU. So that a CPU, well, traditionally a CPU executes and tracks the callbacks from the CPU that enqueued the callback. So the point here, here is to uh, move away this work to other CPUs so that it, the, the isolated CPU is not disturbed. Um, being able to tune at runtime this uh, CPU mask, which is currently only uh, tunable through the kernel parameter uh, RCU no CBs. Being able to do that at runtime um, required a lot of work. I thought only uh, two months. And uh, Paul told me, oh, I can do that. And I said, oh, let me try. I'm, I'm not familiar with RCU. I want to, to see what, <laughs> what this is like. So it took two years eventually for me to be able to do that. And in the end, um, the uh, interface uh, to, to um, change the RCU no CB CPU mask using CPU sets was only uh, four patches, which I posted a few months ago, like two months ago. And uh, this patch set had quite a reception um, the first question that was raised by uh, Tijun was, uh, why are we using CPU sets and not uh, SysCTL, for example? Um, because CPU sets is about hierarchy properties on CPUs. Yes? Be able to unmute himself and, and yeah. speak, and we'll hear him. I don't know how this works. Okay. Um, what? Where? Peter. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Better. Peter, you had your hand raised. Can you unmute yourself and speak to us? We should hear you. Yeah, I'm here. Um, I see that this next slide already has uh, my suggestion. Um, and then I said an email as well. Just start with a simple note and extend the ABI if and when there is a use case. Don't start with a split out thing. Sorry, I did not understand the question. So in the previous in, in a previous slide, you suggested um, starting an ABI with all the separate masks split out and available to the user, and I said that's mad. Mm -hmm. uh, and this slide so, already says this, so yeah. So only only can... extend an ABI if there is a use case. If there is no use case, don't do this. Right. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk about that in this slide. Fair enough. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. That that was yeah. I was about to talk about that in the in this in this slide. So the thing is, yeah, indeed, you Peter suggested that we have an all-in-one switch to be able to uh, to to isolate everything. And if should the need arise later, uh, have a more fine-grained uh, interface, right? Right. Uh, <laughs> so um, and at that time we didn't have actually a use case for uh, just tuning RCU no CB alone. Uh, but recently, I realized that RCU no CB is not only used for um, isolating CPUs, but also to save power on Android. And in this case, uh, you don't really need no hertz full and all the other isolation features. So this is why I'm uh, considering again having an interface, at least for RCU no CBs alone. And um, yeah, so that was uh, one, of the, one of the reviews I had. 
And Tijun also didn't like the fact that we are dealing here with uh, flat properties on CPUs, whereas uh, CPU sets is about hierarchy. And hierarchy are not really relevant here. Well, CPU no. sets is also the place we do scheduling partitions. And yeah. they, they nest up to a point, but um, if you do the isolation thing, that's uh, partitions of a single CPU. Mm. They don't nest either. Yeah, right. Yeah, they, they don't mess anyway. But, um, but uh, can't you have uh, like still uh, multiple levels of uh, isolation, like you defer, I don't know. I, I... No, not really. I, I mean, at least I cannot figure out any scenario with that. So, um... like, uh, I'm not sure if uh, it makes sense, but uh, let's say you have your system, you uh, split the CPUs in half and then you delegate like both halves to, I don't know, a different, I don't know, man ah, different thing. isolation and then, properties. Uh, that, yeah, that thing Maybe. can actually yeah. say, okay, I want only two CPUs out, out of the eight that, that, that you gave me to yeah. just manage uh, RCU and OCBs and rest. Uh, and then the other thing can be, can actually configure it like one or four CPUs instead yeah, of Yeah, indeed, that, that sure if, could yeah. be a tricky setup, yeah. Uh, yeah. but, but that, that's possible, indeed. Yeah, yeah, that could make, make sense. But this is not something that couldn't be implemented using a flat property setup. Right? And uh, the other concern that Tijun had was that we are, uh, well, CPU isolation, if, if you dive into the details, uh, you're diving into really gory kernel details. And um, Tijun didn't want to have those exposed in, um, in CPU sets because it's more about very high level properties. Whereas here with uh, CPU isolation, we may be dealing with uh, very fine grained kernel internals like work queue, uh, unbound work queues, case red affinity, or so. Um... Well, only if you make it fine grained. If you do a high level isolation feature, then I think it nicely fits in with the partitioning stuff that's already there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that could work, indeed. Uh, like, for example, we can gather all the unbound work into a single feature, like timer, unbound timers, work use, and case thread into a single feature. Uh, that would be a high-level exposure, but uh, I don't know if we later need more low-level tweaks. I don't know. So yeah, in this case, one possibility could be using CCTL, um, which allows for um, more low-level uh, tuning, and uh, and besides, it's also much more simple to use from a user and developer perspective. And also, it makes CPU isolation not depend on C groups, even though nowadays not depending on C groups is more and more difficult, but um, so yeah, one one possible layout could be having uh, kernel dot isolation dot default, which is an all in one switch, like Peter suggested, and then we can later add uh, features like more more fine grained features that would override the default file, uh, the default uh, parameter like kernel.isolation.rcunocb, for example, which would only override uh, rcunocb. And uh, later we could have kernel.isolation.unbound, no hurts full, I don't know. So that's a suggestion. Uh, I don't know, I don't know exactly what to choose between CPU sets and CCTL. So here is the uh, open question. And that's it. Uh, from my point of view, I think um, I, I will agree with uh, what Peter said that you uh, focus on isolated the nodes, everything. I'll, I'll see you um, no hurtful, and maybe no see no I'll see you as uh, they talk about power saving. 
The other binary green feature, uh, we won't implement until the is proven to be use case for yeah. that. Right. Um, and I agree that um, it's better to be integrated with the uh, CP, CPU set partition feature because uh, otherwise you would do a separate control, it will interfere with what CPU set is doing. So you may make things more complicated, especially if their set of CPU are different. Uh, then uh, we are running into an issue about how which one by which, and it's just a uh, introduce complexity. Yeah, yeah. In in any case, I think we want to start with an all-in-one feature, whether we choose CCTL or uh, CPU sets. Uh, that's for sure. So, but your last point will be basically in favor of implementing. I mean, about having the interface uh, on C groups, right? Yeah. Basically, um, on top of the current partition uh, feature, so you don't separate, um, you don't add a separate thread uh, standalone, but it's an lay an attribute into the partition that return off additional feature uh, for those CPU. Yeah, so that's the advantage of using CPU sets is that you're, uh, well, there is already the schedule load balance file in C group mm -hmm. V1. Yeah, uh, doesn't exist in V2, but there is an alternative, a recent one. Uh, and yeah, we could join that kind of partition with a uh, CPU isolation feature. So yeah, yeah that, that partition already had handled the, uh, the hierarchical aspect that you are, you are able to have limited hierarchy in yeah. V1. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't want to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a good point. Another question or opinion? Um, I was actually thinking about the timers. Um, but what I've seen, at least in the uh, real time use case, um, what we usually do is like we tend to yeah have the timers handling on the housekeeping CPUs, but for certain timers uh, we like them like affine to the CPU where the real time uh, task that actually uh, queues the timer is actually running. So I guess the synthetic use case is a cyclic uh, test. So we run cyclic test on the isolated CPUs, uh, mm -hmm. but then uh, if your if the timers uh, the cyclic test uses for the clock non sleep are fine and move to the housekeeping, then it's a problem because the latency is higher. Yeah. Um, right. So basically, I'm wondering how that would be configured, or if there is any relation to to this thing. Um, I don't know. I, don't know. Uh, I guess those. That can already be done using the uh, ISIL CPUs or or uh, schedule load balance file in CPU sets. So I guess currently we already have some kind of interface for that. There is, I think, a sys, sys uh, control uh, thing called timer timer migration. Oh, there uh, is. So maybe I don't know if that is uh, a point in favor of going this way, but. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. There is a file like that? It's yeah. in CSFS? Or? Uh, uh, yeah, it's this, this control thing. Yeah. Syscall. Oh, it's yeah, Syscall. Okay. Mm -hmm. All The idea is to start with uh, CPU sets now. That, that's the next step. The, the, the conclusion of this discussion. There is no conclusion <laughs> as, <laughs> as I see it. But, but it, would, it would be nice to to, to have at least a, a partial answer. What, what would that be? It seems that people are, are a bit more interested in using CPU sets, I guess, because it's more integrated with uh, the, the existing isolation feature, which is a uh, scheduled balance. Uh, disabling load balancing, which has the same effect as yeah. ISOL CPUs. 
So I guess I'm going to continue with uh, CPU sets. As usual, I'm going to post a half bacon patch and see the reactions. I guess that's the most efficient way to get an answer anyway. So. I guess another, another point of my impression is that uh, for the tuning that, uh, for example, we do um, on OCP, uh, they, I think, yeah, we, we actually tune in some sys, sys control uh, stuff, but uh, I think most of it is uh, using C groups. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, it's not possible to tweak both, but maybe it's uh, easier to have, I mean. To have both, like, both. Uh, no, um, I, I'm saying that, uh, I don't know, uh, can be perceived as uh, I only, I should find what I need to tune, like, uh, on the same place. So maybe this is another yeah. point towards right. using CPU sets and uh, so it's... Yeah, heavy. but one worry I have is, uh, can we expose RCU no CB in CPU sets? Because we will definitely need a way to tune RCU no CBs on run, uh, alone, I mean, on runtime. I know, right? That would be useful, right? For Android and... Yeah, but Uh, uh, as of as for Android, so we do want to optimize. So it's obvious. So it's from PowerPoint yeah. from PowerPoint of view. But would you be interested in having it tunable in runtime? Isolation, yes. But uh, RC, but not RC no CB. RC no CB, we do enable it uh, yeah. uh, constantly, and we don't uh, switch it on runtime because okay. it doesn't make sense yeah. for power savings at all. Okay. One thing I wanted to try was, uh, you know, if we can switch it after boot completes, mm -hmm. because uh, at boot up, we don't care about power that much because like the system is already sure. so like, power hungry. Ah, so just to uh, see if, uh... because like I know that it's not much, but there's some like, like two or three percent improvement in uh, or regression in boot time mm, with that, no CPU. That's significant. Yeah. So. I want to try that. We didn't try it out because... You can try it already. I mean, if there's just a function to call um, that you can try right after the boot. Yeah. But, and see the difference. Yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, that won't work because uh, boot is like defined for us like after init loads and mm -hmm. everything starts up, right? So it's according to the kernel, everything has booted, <laughs> but we're still booting. Yeah. Uh, and so it's the kernel is, I think, like half of the boot process. And then after that, everything else starts up. So, uh, you know, and then we get to the login screen mm -hmm, mm -hmm. after a after so quite some time. Uh, but I thought your question was, is your question about tuning the mask uh, dynamically or just tuning the whole... Tuning just the mask. Just the, yeah. yeah. Tuning just the mask, I think we, we don't do... I, I thought most people just offload everything. Yeah, I think so. Mm. So... Okay. Uh, okay, then in this case, I can just start with uh, directly with an all-in-one file in CPU sets and... But yeah, are you sure Tejun would be okay with that? Or that's the kind of... I thought like he was not okay with kernel internals. He was not entirely close to the ID, but... Um, well, we'll see. After all, the uh, interface part is only... Uh, is, the, is the easiest part because being able to tune at runtime no hurts full that alone is going to be uh 20 30 patches uh that alone and uh, not even considering all the uh, unbound work to offload and stuff like that so um yeah anyway the interface is going to be a detail but yeah we'll see we'll see what he thinks and Okay, if he refuses, we can still move to CCTL. It wouldn't be too big a deal. No. Or maybe keep it at boot parameter if you don't need. But I guess for your use case, you need it to happen dynamically. To have what? To change the mask after boot. Yeah. So I guess current boot parameter won't work. Just the boot for yeah. RCU and the CB, right? Uh, well, for the other masks as well mm -hmm. that you mentioned. As well, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, we need to keep the kernel parameter anyway, yeah. yeah. 
question. Uh, no, that's it. Our speaker. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>